What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did in the markets today, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade in the month of October in 2019. And I also want to discuss with you guys the main catalyst that did shift the markets downwards today and another catalyst that could continue this volatility in the market so if you enjoy this video if you do find value in this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content about the stock market both investing and trading and personal finance this is the channel for you and don't forget to join our strive smart discord group chat and strive smart facebook group both of those are linked down below if you haven't joined them already so guys let's get right into it starting off here with the the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We had a pretty, pretty bad day. You can say this was an abysmal day in the markets. The S&P down $45, down 1.56, nearly 1.6%. You guys can see we smashed through that 2920 level of support. We were holding above it yesterday. It was looking all dandy, but we gapped down aggressively today we broke that and now it seems like we're heading down to the support at around 2880 and if we zoom in a bit here guys on the 20 day one hour you can see we're in a straight downtrend right now right lower highs we're in the process of making a lower low if we get below 2855 that lower low will be made the downtrend will be continuing at that point right we're seeing a bearish cross here the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, if we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see the drastic gap down that we had today from the close yesterday, which was at around 2937, 2938. We gapped down all the way to about 2919 at the market open, which was a gap down of around 20 points. And you guys can see we ran down from there, saw a bit of recovery in the middle of the day, and then power hour, we dumped aggressively, losing about 30 to 35 points on the SMP. So overall right now, guys, I'm watching this four hour chart and I'm watching to see if this right shoulder and the head and shoulder overall pattern that I'm seeing here plays out, right? We've been talking about this over the past couple of videos and I'm seeing this head and shoulder pattern on all the markets, the S&P, the Dow and the NASDAQ included, right? We have the left shoulder here. We have the, the head here and now we're in the formation or in the process, rather, of making that right shoulder. And overall, I think if we break this little uptrend that you guys see here um, based off this trend line, which I personally think will happen, you know, we're going to be further in the stages of completion, right? We get to that lower low. If we eventually get down to 2800 and even into the $2,700 level, you know, this is going to be really what I think could potentially happen if this does end up playing out. So if we go to the Dow Jones and Industrial average, you can see overall, you're seeing the similar pattern head and shoulder, left shoulder, head, the right shoulder is in the process right now of being formed. We had a red day of about 313 points down around 1.2%, not as bad as the S&P, but still it's a pretty bad day in the markets for the Dow Jones industrial average. You guys can see we failed to break above 26.6, which was a level of, of resistance that we've been watching from back in the beginning beginning of May towards the end of April, right around that time period back in 2019, a couple of months ago, right? Last time we got rejected there, we sold all the way down to about 24,700. So now that we got rejected there, we also broke below 26.2, hence why, or really you can see that because we, we closed below it. You guys can see we closed at 26,160. So now we may be going down to 25,930, which is this next level of support. If we break that, we may be going down to 25.6, then 25.3, and so on, right? The lowest level that we can see here on this chart is going to be around 24.7, like I said a couple of seconds ago, and if we do get all the way down here, guys, and especially if we break below that level, that's going to be the completion here of this right shoulder on the Dow Jones. If we go to the 20-day one hour, just like the S&P, guys, straight up downtrend, right? We're on the process, or we're in the process, rather, of making this lower low. We already 
already got rejected. We closed below the 50 SMA here, lower high. This is a straight up downtrend, right? If we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see massive gap down, right? 26,470 is where we closed yesterday, roughly. We gapped down all the way to 26,250 bottomed out a little bit below that resistance at around 26.1 or rather 26.2 we broke above 26.2 holding it as a support again we failed to hold it as a support literally within the last 20 minutes of the market hence why we closed below it going to the Nasdaq guys right now it's up $4.75 but that is the future it did not close green today that is a fact I'm pulling up my Yahoo Finance app very quickly guys the Nasdaq did the worst today in terms of a percentage basis down 1.7%, down 132 points here on the day. Pretty, pretty bad day in terms of the NASDAQ. You guys can see on the one day, one minute, straight downtrend, right? 77.80 is where we peak 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in terms of the future. We uh, downtrended all the way to the market open. We had that little rally in the middle of the day, right? Really didn't do much because we dumped from there, breaking below moving average support levels and closing at a lower low at around 76.13 here. If we zoom it out a bit, 20 day, one hour, you guys can see we're trending under moving averages as well in the process of making this lower low, especially if we break the support of 75.80, which if we zoom out a bit to the 184 hour chart, you can see that is a very prominent level of support where we held multiple times over the past couple of weeks and over the past couple of months, as you guys can see back during this time period period um, right here in the April to May month. So I think you know, if we do end up breaking below 7580, 7450 is the next target, as well as 7250 is the lowest target that we are seeing here. Well, actually, the lowest target would be around um, $7,000. If we do get this low in the NASDAQ, and if that does end up happening, that's going to be pretty ugly. And I talked about this in my previous video, one of my previous videos, that my trend line prediction on the NQ here came out. Um, came to life pretty much, right? This, These are trend lines that I drew out a couple of weeks ago, and I always talk about on this channel how it's super important to draw trend lines in your charts, right? Draw supports, draw resistances, draw uptrends, downtrends, channels, whatever it may be, right? Predict what the markets could potentially do. This helps you in identifying patterns and thus trading in the stock market. So I drew this out to kind of give myself a visual visualization of what could potentially happen, and it came to life. We went down to about 75.80. We held that level of support. We got very oversold at that point. We popped up. We got rejected right around 77.20 to around 77.70, which you can see is what I drew out based on this trend line. We needed that, that breather a little bit, and now we're starting to dump again as I have drawn by this trend line. So this is looking like it's playing out guys. And again, if we dump, that's going to be the right shoulder of the NASDAQ being completed. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on the markets right now? What are your thoughts on this trade meeting that is going down on Thursday in Washington? This is going to be massive. In my opinion, it's going to either rock the markets to the downside, which I think is more likely, or let's say things go well, which again, I don't think that's the likely option, but let's say things go well. This can also bring the markets up a lot, right? So I'm pulling up some notes I have here on my phone as to why these markets aggressively dumped. So let me pull this up. Concerns over U.S.-China trade tensions have re-escalated throughout the week. Before the State Department's travel ban announcement, which if you don't know, I'm actually going to read this to you now, there was a travel ban announcement on Chinese officials tied to alleged human rights abuses in China's, I'm not even going to uh, try and pronounce this, but it's Xi'an, Yang. Let's just put it like that. I don't know how to say that word, but if you guys know what I'm talking about, you guys know what I'm talking about. Stocks immediately fell following the news from the State Department. Just prior, stocks had parred some losses after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said in a speech, the central bank was set to resume growth of its balance sheet soon amid recent volatility and overnight repurchase market rates. 
Again, the travel ban, we just talked about that. The Trump administration added eight Chinese companies and 20 Chinese public security bureaus to the U.S. blacklist over allegations that the organizations were involved in human rights abuses, again, in that chi- in China's that word that I can't pronounce, region. So this is what dropped the markets today. We got some tensions in, you know, between the U.S. and China like we have been over the past couple of weeks, over the past couple of months. And at this point, it's been around a year or two since things have been really escalating, right? So keep an eye on on this. This is something huge that is going to be a massive catalyst in the market. Thursday, again, they are meeting in Washington negotiations. Just keep an eye on the markets that day. That day and Friday could be an absolute roller coaster if things get out of control. So, what did I do personally today, guys? And again, let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on China trade, US, the meeting on Thursday, the markets. Let me know your thoughts. I love talking to you guys down below in the comments section. But what did I do today, guys? I played SQQQ. SQQQ, it's kind of a tie between TVIX and SQQQ at this point as to what I like trading more. I like to lean over to TVIX because it's pretty volatile and there's a lot, a lot of margin to be made, but I feel like SQQQ is a bit more stable. It's not as volatile, although it is a 3x leverage DTF, but it's not as volatile as TVIX. But today was one of those days that I sided with SQQQ because I saw the pattern playing out on the NQ that I talked about and I have illustrated here on these trend lines that I talked about a couple of minutes ago and in yesterday's video, right? So we popped up to this 180 SMA here and like I have illustrated by this trend line, we dumped. And at this point, it was 5 a.m. The markets are actually, was it 5 a.m.? Let me zoom in so I can show you guys exactly here. No, it was not 5 a.m. That's completely wrong. This was yesterday, actually. Um, it was about midnight Eastern Standard and into the night when the NQ got rejected at that spot on the four hour chart and started to go to that lower low spot, which is what I need to see to trade SQQQ because SQQQ goes up. Up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off. So the fact that the NASDAQ was selling off and into the market open, again, that ended up bringing up SQQQ uh, because the NASDAQ was selling off, right? And you can see it here again, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., into the market open. This was selling off aggressively, right? So pretty much, guys, I hopped into this once the market opened. Not NQ, SQQQ, guys. SQQQ, you guys know this one. It's a 3x leverage ETF. I talk about this a lot on the channel, right? So I pretty much got in on this initial run this morning. I got in off of this little pop on the 50 SMA. This was kind of a little scalp trade here. You know, we saw how it was holding roughly the 50 SMA, you know, yesterday into the close pre-market and all night the NQ was downtrending. And although you can't really see SQQQ, what it's doing until about 4 a.m. Yep, you can see it here at 4 a.m., the fact that NQ was downtrending from 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., that gave me the notion that SQQQ would be uptrending on top of that 50 SMA. We got that, right? And once we got the pullback, it was like a launching pad, especially as the NASDAQ started to sell aggressively. So that was what I did today. Nothing crazy, right? I'll talk, I'll talk to you guys about a swing that I actually took a loss on here in a second, but got in on this pullback, right? 50 SMA pop here, 33 40, I think I got in 33.43, wrote it past the resistance. Not too crazy of a game. It was around a 0 0.5, 0 0.6 gain on SQQQ. And honestly, today was one of those days, guys, that I left a lot on the table. If I were to just simply hold, relax on that initial position this morning, you know, at around 33.40, whatever it was, you know, I could have made a killing if I were to hold it for the rest of the day. But the thing is, hindsight is 20-20. Of course, I'm saying that now that the charts have played out, right? I'm obviously saying that now that the charts played out. But during this, you know, it was overbought. We were getting to a point where, you know, this was reaching a resistance from a couple of hours ago, and it was a wise idea to just sell out and take the profits, right? I trade on principles. I trade on a set of rules that I'm not going to break just because I think there's a lot more upside. And sure, I leave a lot of profit on the table that way, but I'm okay with that. So let's go to PG. This is one that I took a little loss on today. I got into this one Friday, and honestly, this was a mistake on my 
my part. I feel like I got in a bit too late on Friday. I jumped the gun on this one. If you guys can see, I think this is the Friday session. Yeah, because this is Monday. This is Tuesday. I got in at, at a pretty dumb spot, right? I didn't get in like on, on the bottom here on that 180 SMA hold on the four hour chart. That would have been wise, right? That would have been wise. I didn't get in there. Again, I got in as it got a bit more overextended. So I kind of got caught in a bull trap this is this is me being honest i got caught in a bull trap here now we're starting to see a dump and a retest on the 180 sma so the fact that we saw that guys you know the fact that we're seeing this dump we didn't get the higher high i decided to just cut my losses i think it was around um it was more than a one percent loss i think it was like a close to a 1.2 1.3% loss on PG here. My stop was initially 2%, but I figured just play it safe here. The, 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 the talks are coming on Thursday. This can rock the markets. I'm just going to take a little loss. So PG didn't pan out. If we go to the 20-day, one hour, you can see it's kind of a head and shoulder here, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Now we may be dumping. And again, if we get that dump, guys, that's going to be pretty negative on this four-hour chart because over the past couple of months, this 180 SMA has been a strong level of support, and that would be a, a key technical break if we did break that in terms of Procter & Gamble. So that's what I did today. Took a loss on PG. It's okay. I made up for it kind of with SQQQ, and I'm looking forward to these markets getting more rocky so I can trade SQQQ and TVIX for the rest of this week. So that is what I did. Let me know down below in the comments what did you guys do in terms of trading. And now let's talk about some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now, NEO being one of them. NEO, ticker symbol NIO. This is deemed the Tesla of China. I don't know who made that up, but that's what people call it. It's a China. Chinese company, Chinese electric vehicle company, obviously out in China. And this stock has been getting thrashed. You guys can see from $10 down to about a dollar now. That's an insane drop in NEO. And pretty much it's because they're burning through cash like it's nobody's business, right? They had an earnings report a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago. I forget when it was. You guys can see here. It was towards the end of September. So it was about two, three weeks ago at this point, two weeks ago. And they reported terrible earnings massive loss and the stock went from three bucks down to a dollar 16 that is insane but now we got a positive catalyst right if we go to the live news you guys can see and by the way this is a very awesome thing about thinkorswim just go down here live news on whatever chart you're pulled up uh you have pulled up whatever stock and it'll tell you news regarding that stock um or etf or whatever you're looking at so you can see here neo delivered 4,800 vehicles, 4,799 to be exact, in the third quarter, which is up 35% versus quarter two. So that is actually a very good piece of news, a good catalyst amid all of this craziness and negative stuff that's been going on with NEO. So this could give it some room to run here, at least in the short term. I think today it was up 15% at one point. Now it's up 10%. It was up 15 cents, 10% at the close. We're getting above that 50 SMA on the four hour chart. You know, this could end up filling up, um, maybe not the 260. That's a bit of a stretch here, but who knows, right? It could maybe start to break up here, especially as we're slowly making higher highs. You know, you guys can see here, we made a higher low here at 150. That's a higher low from 116. So you can see this one's trying to start reversing now to the upside. We hit a higher high today. All we need to see now is that full on break. And if we just pop out here a bit, get this support resistance tool out if we draw out some levels here, guys, you know, if we look at those, okay, $2, $2.50, these are some spots that NEO could be going up to in terms of old resistance levels, which let's say from where we are now, 170 roughly up to 2 bucks, that is a nice 14 15%, right? If you're into these penny stocks that are volatile, that do have a lot of margin, but also a lot of risk, this is one to consider now because this nice positive catalyst that could end up pushing it up. So NEO, NIO, I'm liking this one. You guys and D guys, guys, the old, the good old you guys and D guys combo. This is ones, or rather, these are ones that I watch all the time, right? Natural gas is right here, slash NG. 
and we trade you gas and degas because they trade based on natural gas, right? When natural gas is selling off, degas is going up. But when natural gas is going up, you gas is going up. So right now, we're seeing natural gas is in a clear downtrend, right? The 50 SMA is acting as a resistance. We actually failed to break above 230. So 230 is acting as a resistance now. And you guys, or rather natural gas, is in the process of making that lower low at this point, especially if it makes the break downwards here to 220, which is that next support, which again, if we do get there, that would be that lower low. So right now, degas is favorable in my opinion, because again, it goes up whenever natural gas is going down, and natural gas is showing the potential to absolutely dump here. And the beautiful thing about this is, sure, we could play degas on this dump, the potential dump in natural gas, but then let's say natural gas dumps and then starts to recover a bit back up, let's say from 220, maybe back up to 230, we could then play U gas, which goes up whenever natural gas is going up. So that's kind of what I'm preparing for at this point. You guys can notice here that you know, last time U gas got to this level, it doubled in price and I don't recommend swing trading these leveraged ETFs. There's a lot that goes behind that. There's decay. There's really the, the decay is massive, right? This you can see over the long term, guys, this has been trending down. This is not an asset and you can read it on the website. This is not an asset that's meant to be swing traded. This is mostly for day to day volatility. But then again, People are going to swing trade it regardless of what the website says and regardless of what I'm saying, right? So let's just be real at this point. If you're looking to buy you guys at these levels, it's a real possibility that you can double your money, right? From $10 we saw a couple of weeks ago, we got all the way up to $24. And that was because natural gas rallied aggressively. So the next time natural gas rallies, and trust me, guys, it will. It's only a matter of time. This one could double. This one could make you 50%, 40%. But again, it's not meant to be swing traded. There's a lot of risk behind that. And if you are looking to swing trade this, I would treat it like a spec investment that you throw in money that you're willing to lose a lot of, right? Let's say you're willing to lose a thousand bucks, throw 1000 bucks in you guys right now, right? Go ahead, right? You, you, you can potentially make 40, 50, 60% on that money, but you can also lose 10%. 50%, 30% if natural gas never does end up recovering again, right? But hey guys, what do I know, right? I'm just some guy on YouTube making videos, right? But anyway, it's worth watching, but trade at your own risk, right? So let me pull up some stocks on my phone right now very quickly before I do end off this video. We'll go panic, not panic mode. That's what the title is. I'm reading the title. That's why I said panic mode. But stocks here, we talked about NEO. We talked about TVIX, SQQQ. We talk about those all the time. Those are obviously two market ETFs that I'm watching because I think volatility is coming to these markets. SQQQ goes up whenever the NASDAQ's going down. TVIX goes up when the VIX is going up and when the overall markets are selling off, right? So those are two that I'm watching. In terms of stocks right now, I'm being very, very careful because I think there's some more downside to come. I think there's more selling to come, which is why I'm focusing on inverse ETFs, UGAS, DGAS, these market ETFs, and gold, right? Gold is 100% something that I'm watching here, right? We saw gold did pretty decent today, up half a percent, up $8, but gold, it's on the verge of a breakout here, right? If it breaks above this 180 SMA, GDX is going to do quite well, which in turn will pop up JNUG, which goes up whenever GDX is going up at a 3X rate, right? This is a 3X leverage ETF that I think is due for a huge rally if these markets dump and if people start flocking to gold, pushing the price of gold up. Up. So that's just my honest thoughts here, guys, right? I'm not going to come on here saying that I'm swing trading stocks, saying that I think the markets are going to fly up at this point because the truth is I'm not sure I was in a swing trade. I got burned. So now not really burned. I lost a little bit of money. It happens, right? But now I'm just focusing on these day trades as this week starts to unfold, as we start to get more insight on what's going on here on Thursday in terms of trade 
trade. And then next week, hey, maybe we could end up hopping into some swing trades. And speaking about swing trading, guys, I actually made a video earlier today. It's linked down below, and I'll pin it in the comment section about three tips that you should be doing three tips that you should be taking advantage of practical tips when it comes to swing trading so go check that out if you guys do have time i promise if you're into swing trading you will find value in that and again it's pinned down below in the comments and it's linked down below in the description box so with that guys i'll wrap up the video here if you enjoyed the video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me and don't be shy join our strive smart discord group chat join our strive smart facebook group follow me on instagram i'm doing a giveaway there in a couple of weeks and you don't want to miss out on that all of the links are down below so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching especially if you stuck till the end why not drop a comment down below stuck till the end if you did stick to the end i do appreciate you and yep yeah, i'll catch you all in the next video peace out